All right, welcome back. We're in week eight, which means that we're close to halfway through the semester. Week nine will be halfway. What should you be doing this week? You've got all of your assignments under week eight. So you should be through all of your assignments up through week eight. Six, seven. <clears throat> we have the Excel project. <coughs> <coughs> and we have programming. That's it. That's pretty easy. For those of you who may have struggled with the Excel project where we do your grade, right here, I put a new template up. And a new, have I put up the new video? I put up a new video. So you can watch a new video. There's a new template, and I'll help you do that one. Okay? So you need to do everything up through week eight. And of course, you're in my online class. You need to post to the discussions for week eight. Please turn your monitor sideways. I will not take up too much of your time. And if you want to have a conversation with the person next to you, please do that in the hallway because, like, my head gets distracted if somebody else is talking. Obviously, yours does not. It seems like you could totally tune me out if you're talking. So if you want to talk to your neighbor, please do that outside. You're welcome if you guys got something you need to talk about. But for me, I just can't focus and concentrate if somebody else is talking. Cool? Cool? Cool. All right. And turn your monitor sideways, please. Thanks. You guys got, you're working on the coding stuff. I appreciate you helping each other. I'm all in favor of that, but it's just for me when I'm trying to convey some content, I can't focus if other people are chatting. So we got Windows, that was week one. This was through week five. One, two, three, four, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you should be through the third Excel exam through here. And then the exams, we have quizzes in here. Those should be through eight through eight, and uh, that's it. So through eight right there, that's chapter eight. So uh, we haven't done seven because I was sick, so we're catching up. So we'll do seven, which is the internet, and then we'll talk a little bit about privacy and security. What's up? We did seven? No, um, for the, the lab test, yeah. the board Excel, do you, you need a copy of Word? In here? Yeah, uh, yeah, in the exams, the lab test. Right here, oh, dang it, oh, dang it. <laughs> Right here. These? Yeah, you need a copy of Word for it. No, I think you just upload it, don't you? I was looking at it, and it had you download a Word file, and it was telling you to do stuff in, in Word. And then when you're done, don't you upload it? Yeah. So just upload the file. That's fine. But I'm just wondering, you need a, the, the, the program. Upload completed file. But you need the program. You need Microsoft Word, yeah, yeah so you might want to do it in the classroom. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I see what you're saying. Do you know if the computers in the library have... They should. I don't know. I should know. When you find out, let me know. Then I'll know. <laughs> All right. So we're going to talk about the Internet. The Internet came out of the ARPANET, started in the 60s. The ARPANET stood for Advanced Research Project Agency. It is now called DARPA. And DARPA is Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. This is like our version of, you know, in the James Bond movies where he goes and visits that dude who's creating all the cool cars and little devices that do interesting little, you know, it looks like a watch, but it's really a bomb or something. Q, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. In the Bond movies? Ah, nothing's coming up. So this is a DARPA is, a, is our version of that, Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. And they build like all of the cool James Bond gadgets, cutting edge. So when, uh, I think I've, I've, ARPA, Net, I think I've showed this to you and talked to you about this, about the bombs, didn't I? Nuclear bombs and communication and packet switching versus, uh, packet switching versus circuit switch networks. Yeah, did I tell you about all this, right? So that was the internet when it first started. It was called the ARPANET. And the reason was is <clears throat> because we wanted to be able to maintain communication in the event of a nuclear war. And so if, if circuit switching and, one, and you're using the line between RAND and, I don't know, BBN, whatever the heck that is, and that got cut, you're no longer talking. That's circuit switching. It's just like a phone. It's one circuit. It's open. Packet switching is we send packets of information, and routers help find the destination. The receiving computers put the packets back together. That's packet switching. And uh, so it created a packet switch network. So if this gets blown up, well, I could still go this way, right? So that was the idea behind it. So it came out of ARPANET. 
Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. By the way, we'll watch this at the end of class. This is a Google-owned company, or I'll pause the video right here and I'll show it to you because it's topical. But it's called uh, Big Dog, Big Dog, what's the name? Big Dog Robot from, who makes it? Big Dog Robot. Big Dog Overview, who makes Boston Dynamics? Boston <coughs> Dynamics uh, Walking Robot. All right, so just Google that. And uh, and this is the newest version of, of the walking robe of, you know, Boston Dynamics is a robot company owned by Google. And this is the newest robot they've made. So I'm going to find a video and show it to you. All right, so if you're in the online class, go watch Atlas, the next generation. You will not have as much fun as we just had laughing at that. Probably. Maybe you will. And then also watch Terminator, and I'll let you read the rest of this video that you look for. <laughs> So that's ARPANET, Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. I'm sure Boston Dynamics works with them to create the next generation of killing machines. There's a difference between the Internet and the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web is a service, it's software that runs on the Internet. You can think of the Internet as the computer, the hardware. It's a bunch of cables, computers connected together. World Wide Web is one of the services or pieces of software running on that hardware. The digital divide is a concept of the haves and have-nots of technology. So if you go over to Edison, that side of town, they're going to have less access to technology, the kids over there, than the kids over by Clovis North. <coughs> kids over by Clovis North are growing up, and the whole family has computers. Everybody has a phone, right? There's computers everywhere. Kids over on that side of town, <clears throat> they might not even, I don't know, you know, there's less money, so less access to computers. Net neutrality is an idea of keeping the net neutral. So there's some people that want to make the net, uh, you know, pay to play kind of place, where if you're a company and you want to get your material to users quickly, you have to pay AT and T and other people money to get it to them quickly. Uh, up till now, it hasn't been that way, but you could see why AT and T, those kinds of companies, would want to make it that way. More money for them. So this idea, of keep the net neutral. So we're just learning about different ideas. World Wide Web, Internet, that digital divide, net neutrality. ISP is an internet service provider. They're the people you get your internet service from, usually Comcast around here. URLs are these deals up here. They stand for Uniform Resource Locator. Okay, so it's just another way to say domain or address, right? That's a picture of one. We uh, talk about URLs, right? There's a top-level domain, so like a .com is commercial business. EDU, obviously you guys know this stuff. Educational institution. Gov is a government organization. <coughs> Org is non-commercial. Net is supposed to be somebody who's connected with, you know, doing computer stuff. .mil is for military. There's a bunch more of them out there. Right, like IO is Indian Ocean, so some tech companies use something .io, right? Even though it just means Indian Ocean. An IP address is the address everything on the internet. So we talk about the internet has a protocol. We learned about protocols last week. HTTP stands for the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. The S stands for Secure. So you always want to make sure when you're communicating with your bank or anything that could be sensitive, it's HTTPS. That means anything that you're going to send gets encrypted before it's sent, and then your bank or whatever receives it and knows how to unencrypt it. Likewise, when they send something to you, it's encrypted, and when it comes to you, your browser knows how to unencrypt it. That's HTTPS. So anytime you're sending sensitive information, username, password, bank information, it should be HTTPS. The P is the protocol, HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Hypertext is, is the language with which web pages are built, Hypertext Markup Language, HTML. It's called Hypertext because we have hyperlinks, so we could put links in them and click them and go to other documents. And so that's uh, all HTML, HTTP. And then we have uh, IP addresses, that's from the TCP IP protocol. So if you look at like network, 
There's the Aussie model, which is for how we build networks. The internet, the internet is application layer, the transport layer, the network layer, the data link layer, and the physical layer. So that's what the internet uses, is application, transport, network, data link, physical. And uh, transport is your TCP, IP, right? So right here, you can see transport TCP. And that is uh, TCP right there. I'm just looking. I guess IP is network, the next level down. And HTTP, this is always moving. People are always arguing about this. This is up here last week. Application is HTTP. So uh, the point being, HTTP is built upon TCP and IP. And uh, TCP IP is Transmission Control Protocol, Internet Protocol. And everything on the Internet has an IP address, Internet Protocol address. So if I showed you this, so if I was to go to like dig World Wide Web McClouds.com, it'll give me the IP address. And the IP address is 72.29.31.4. So I could just go to 72.29.31.4 and it's my mom. It's like an old website from 2005. I built it for my mom. And it's uh, building websites with sound is no longer in vogue. So anyhow, that's her website from 2005. But you got we got there by 72.29.31.4. Could have also just put in McLeod's and it'd bring up the same song. So I'm not going to play it again. Same thing with Google, right? If we were to dig Google google.com we'd see 127.217.04 I don't know if this will work with Google because they're pretty sophisticated should though it's Google but they redirected from the IP address showing up here to Google so they're like haha -ha. what happened to my screen it's like doing this weird deal I don't know. All right, so that's uh, IP addresses. So there's this entire thing called the domain name system. And the domain name system has domain name servers which resolve IP addresses to domain, or domain names to IP addresses. So when you put in mcclouds.com, it figures out that resource is at 72.29.31.4 and sends you there. <coughs> it's easier to remember mcclouds.com and 72.29.31.4. And we already talked a little bit about TCP IP, different layers of the network model, right? And, uh, and then packet switching versus circuit switching. You know, so circuit switching is like that. It's a circuit, it's always open, it's always on, it's a phone line, right? Whereas packet switching is like this, and this is a really good diagram of it, where we have a, whoa, we have a message, we break it up into packets, give it an address, we send it out over the network, and then it gets routed over the network, different directions, and when it arrives at its destination, it gets reassembled. So the packets could go different routes. Not too complicated, right? Pretty straightforward. The basics, you know, it's pretty easy to wrap your head around. Searching. There's a great little power searching with Google course that is part of our extra credit if you want to take it. You can learn about doing more advanced searching with Google. Just for instance, you could go to Google and you could actually search for Google advanced search. And you could go into Google advanced search and you could set a whole bunch of things. So for instance, I might just want to search, I don't know, what might, what I, what might I want to search? Maybe, uh, Fresno City College edu, just that website, and maybe I just want to search for McLeod, right, at Fresno City College edu. So here are all the links at Fresno City College edu. They're all Fresno City College edu with McLeod in them. Interesting, you know, advanced searching. Advanced searching also lets you do things like, well, you know, you could do image search, so surf, and, huh? You just search for Google Advanced Search. So here I, I search for surfing images, but I could go to Search Tools, and I could come over here and I could search for, hey, I want things just with this reddish color, right? So now it gave me surf images that are red. 
And I could say I just want things with faces. So surf things. Ew, ouch. Let's get rid of that. And let's go with like, I, I don't want any color, any color. I want any color. That's better. And uh, I could search for news, images in the news. <coughs> Why surf fighting is disgusting, especially in Los Angeles. Nope, bad. That's a bad job, guys. No videos? You know, uh, I could also, you know, there are all the images. Images, here we go, sorry. And then I could do uh, more search tools. And so size, color, type, time, past 24 hours. Interesting, right? Past 24 hours. And I could also do usage rights. So, hey, this is labeled for reuse with modifications. I could change it if I wanted. So I could use all those images and not get in trouble for taking some of these photos. So that's advanced image search. And one of the things about image search is you could also, like, if I had a picture of, like, I don't know, Yeah, yeah, there I am in the hospital. I was totally sick. Documents desktop. So I could show this in Finder. And I could just go back to images. And uh here, let's do this. I gotta go to images. And now that I'm at images, I could drag this and drop it. So it's gonna search for images similar to that or information where that image occurs. Whoa. Well, that's pretty cool. Visually similar images. Yeah. Apparently, uh <laughs> I, uh, I uh, look like a thug, apparently. <laughs> An unhappy unha convict. Really? <laughs> I kind of thought I was smiling in that image. Mm, cool. So that's power searching with Google. Um, when you're on, just you know, on the web, you could go into uh, Chrome. I recommend you use Chrome as your browser, and you could go into uh, incognito window. So this is what you should use when you are searching for things you don't want other people to know that you're searching for them. Okay, so you're looking for a gift for your significant other, you don't want them to know that you're looking for that or something. And you could also clear your browsing, browsing his, history over uh, under settings. You could clear your browsing history. That's going incognito. How many people know the difference? Let's, this is called the truth will save you. If you don't know the difference between BCC and CC, raise your hand and I will not call on you. Cool. So uh, a couple of people. So, CC stands for carbon copy, and BCC stands for blind carbon copy. So back in the day when you made a memo, if you wanted that memo for a couple of people, you'd actually take a sheet known as carbon, you'd put it between the two pieces of, two pieces of paper, and then you'd type your memo, and it would create a carbon copy. Because as your typewriter hit the first page, and the ink ribbon, it'd make the ink on the first page, but the hit would go through the carbon and put the carbon on the second page. Crazy. And so you can make two cop type two things up at once, carbon copy. And then, uh, so what, what that stands for now is if I'm sending an email to my boss and I want my colleague to know that I sent that email to my boss, I'll CC my colleague. And CC means this email's not for you, 
It's just a piece of information to let you know I emailed this to our boss. Right? So that's what CC means. And, uh, and my boss will know that I've also CC'd my colleague. If I BCC my colleague, my colleague will, will know, oh, I sent this email to the boss and that I didn't tell my boss that I told my colleague about it because when my boss gets the email, my boss won't see who's been BCC'd. So you have two, meaning use, use two when you're writing an email. The two part is who that email is to. This is for you. CC, this is for you, FYI, just your information, by the way, take a look at it. BCC is, hey, by the way, I sent this to somebody, take a look at it. You know, kind of whisper, don't let people know. That's BCC, right? The person who receives it won't know that that uh, that you BCC'd it to somebody else. Sometimes people use BCC to send it to a whole bunch of people. So you get the email, but you don't know, you know, everybody else who has also emailed. Netiquette is just etiquette on the net. So that's netiquette. Spam obviously is sending unwanted emails to people and uh, it's not so much of a problem if you use Google. Google's really good at filtering out spam. They have people whose full-time job is understanding how spam works and getting rid of it. That's kind of crazy. Your full-time job is to get rid of spam. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Phishing is when people send you emails and try to get information from you. Never click a link in an email. Okay? Never click a link in an email. That's it. Because often those links could go to spoofed websites. So it'll look like your bank's website, but it's not your bank's website. You enter your credentials, and then they have your username and password. So that's it for the Internet and the World Wide Web. I say we talk about security and privacy next week. I feel like one week's enough, and I think it'll be okay. We'll just keep pacing ourselves. So we'll do week eight next week. We'll just be a week behind. Anybody have any questions? Cool. So that leaves like 40 minutes for us, 50 minutes for us just to do work. Um, and uh, I'll take attendance, and that's, that's it. So go ahead and turn your monitors back around. Thank you for your attention.